and happy Halloween! For my final video of the month, we have Chucky, which I've been wanting to recreate for such a long time now. I hope you guys enjoy it, and huge thank you to all who tuned in this Halloween season. We definitely did not make it to 31 videos, but I am really happy with the ones I did manage to put out, and I hope you guys have enjoyed them. I'm going to be continuing with some of the looks I had planned over the next few months, so stay tuned for those, but if you want to know how I created this Chucky look, then just keep on watching. Okay, so I've already applied my base and some powder and I've blocked my right brow and then I put just a little bit of my concealer in my left brow. We're going to start by outlining our design using a medium to dark brown eyeshadow on a detail brush. I'm starting by lining the two super pronounced wrinkles he has at the top of the nose, then moving on to the slashed and beat up areas. I'm using a few reference photos to try and create something pretty close to Chucky, but if you look around the internet, you'll see that he looks at least slightly different in almost every photo. So if you want to, do your best to follow reference photos you like or just create a design that you like on yourself. You're going to see my eyes moving to my reference photos quite frequently here and I'm taking the design down onto my neck, just down far enough so the sweater will be covering it. These lines are just a rough guide for us so they don't need to be perfect. And I'm buffing the lines away with my foundation or powder brush if I decide I want to change the placement. On some of the wider areas, I'm filling in with the eyeshadow. On the left eye, I'm lining around in the shape of my eye and adding a few wrinkles around the outer corner and under the eye. Then once I'm done with all my outlines, I'm going in with a berry red eyeshadow and filling in the area around the right eye and lightly blending that along all the slashed lines with a small crease blending brush. This is going to help give an irritated and kind of bruised look around all these pieces. And again, I'm filling in any wider areas with this eyeshadow. On the other eye, I'm starting out with a mauve pink eyeshadow and blending that over the entire outlined area, just applying that a bit unevenly. Then I'm adding a blue, slightly green toned eyeshadow over top of that using a smaller blending brush. And I'm focusing this around the inner contour of the eye and just above the crease as well as a little bit under the eye. I've also darkened those areas even more using the brown eyeshadow I used for the outlines and then taking that on a detail brush, I'm deepening the outside areas of the wrinkles above the nose. Then I'm taking a dark red eyeliner and lining my waterline all around the left eye only, smudging that out with a pencil brush and I'm applying a little bit along the top lash line as well. I decided I didn't want that shadow blended down so low, so I'm applying some of my concealer to modify and clean that up, and then blending along the edges again with a bit of the blue and brown eyeshadows, setting just the lower waterline with the berry red eyeshadow. I'm contouring just a little along the jawline and up onto the chin, then we're getting into the nose contour and wrinkle shading around the mouth. I'm using my usual contour shade on a pencil brush to start out all these contours. This is pretty much the same as we did for Tiffany with slightly different placement. I wanted to create more of a shorter button nose, so I'm shading around the tip and then slightly blending up along the sides. Shading up onto the outer bottom of the nostrils, then defining the nasal labial folds, blending along the nose wrinkles, and shading under the nose as well. Once I have all the base contours placed, I'm going over again to darken certain areas. Then I'm going back in with the darker brown eyeshadow on a detail brush to darken and define and add more wrinkle lines and dimples around the mouth. You can smile and wrinkle your face up to see where you might want them so they look more natural on your face, and I switch back to the pencil brush and lighter contour color to shade around the apples of the cheeks. 
I didn't really like how those looked, so I buffed them away a bit again with my foundation brush, then moved on to applying just a hint of blush to the cheeks. Then I went in and blended those more defined lines out using the pencil brush, then darkened the shading around the outside of the nostrils. Just as I did with Tiffany, I played around and experimented a lot with the placement until I was pretty happy with the shading. However, we are going to come back to this at the end. Since we lined the waterline on this side with red, our other eye already looks slightly whiter, but I decided to go in with a white eyeliner to make it appear even bigger. I didn't really end up liking this, so feel free to skip out on this part if you want to. I topped off that white eyeliner with an off-white eyeshadow to help set it in place. I'm then going in with two more red eyeshadows, these ones are more orange toned, and applying both of those to just the main area around the right eye using a flatter, more dense brush to pack onto the top and a smaller blending brush along the bottom. Then a fluffy powder brush to help swipe away any fallout and a more precise brush for the smaller areas. Now I'm using a dark red alcohol activated paint on a fine detail brush to define all the shapes and lines, applying in further on the wider cuts around the eye but being careful not to apply too close to the eye. And I'm using my finger to tap it out and kind of blend it into the eyeshadow. You totally don't need to use this. The main reason I decided to use this was because I just really love this aged blood color and I thought it was perfect for this. But you can use a body paint, cream, or even a liquid lipstick or liner as well. This is where we're defining all of our lines, but they still don't all need to be neat and perfect. I am using my reference photos a bit here, but more just kind of going with the flow and seeing where that takes me. The wider areas, again, I'm filling in with this color. Then I'm taking one of my more orangey red shadows and a dark red eyeliner and applying both of those to the eye area and blending out into the alcohol activated paint to give a bit of a smoother transition. For the brows on this side that's not blocked, I'm first brushing through a white to lighten the hairs. I'm then applying a mix of burnt orange and yellow alcohol activated paints over top of the white using small strokes to create a hair-like effect and making the tail of the brow slightly thicker than my natural brow. I'm applying this to the right brow area as well around those cut areas. You can skip this or make it more sparse if you'd like to as well. I also added in some of a taupe liquid brow liner on this side to help match it to the other brow color a bit better. Then I'm going in with my concealer on a precise brush to help define and highlight along some of the edges of the dark red areas and lines to make them pop forward a bit, applying that between the nose wrinkles and to the tip of the nose as well. I went back in with my dark brown eyeshadow to shade onto this piece so it appears to be pushed in further than the rest darkening the most near the line, and then redefining that line with the red. I'm using a metallic silver liquid eyeliner to create the staples around the face and neck, just using the small applicator brush it comes with. We want to make these pretty flat and straight since they're metal and they probably wouldn't have the same curve to them as the stitches do. On a few of them, I'm creating the little legs of the staple that are going into the skin. Then I'm using a black paint on a detail brush for the stitching. I'm making these much smaller than the staples and giving them a slight curve in either direction to make them appear more dimensional. I'm using photos for reference as well as just placing where I feel like needs them and I was trying out another Makeup Forever color ink here but again feel free to use whatever black product you have for these. Once we have all the base stitches and staples applied, I'm going back in with the brown eyeshadow on a detail brush to add shading where each enters the skin and a little bit under them as well. On a few, I'm creating a subtle shading lines coming out from the stitch where it's going into the skin as if the skin is being pulled down with the string. And I'm using my small concealer brush to correct or help blend out if needed as well as a small clean blending brush. Then going back in with the white color ink on a fine detail brush and lining lightly through the center of each stitch and staple, using my finger to tap it out to help tone it down. I want to focus the white both through the center and near the center of each shape so the ends appear the darkest where they're going into the skin. This will really help these pieces come to life more.
With my medium contour shade on a detail brush, I'm blending this along the outside edges of some of the pieces and stitches to create a shadow, leaving a small space right along the edge where we'll highlight in a little bit. I want this to be fairly subtle so it looks more natural and I'm only shading around sections where I think could use it. I find that if you just take the shading around everything, it can look a bit overkill and not all the edges will necessarily be raised. I'm again using my concealer brush to help clean up if I blend it out too far or too dark anywhere. After the shading comes the highlight, and I'm again using the white color ink to lightly line along those little spaces we left along the edges. Again using my finger and nails to tap out and tone down the color. I'm only applying this to the areas where we previously added the shading. I'm then lining around the staples with my NYX Epic Ink Liner, which surprisingly and thankfully came back to life after a nice long rest, and I'm just doing this to define the shapes a bit better. I decided to quickly line this under each of the stitches curves for a bit more definition as well. For even more dimension, I'm shading with a black eyeshadow along the inside edges of the area around the eye, blending in onto the red using a small flat brush, then blending into the black using the red eyeshadow. I'm taking the black eyeshadow into all the areas that are wide enough for the brush and just along those inner edges of the wider areas. Then I'm darkening the outside of the nose wrinkles with a teeny bit of that black to really deepen them, squinching up my face to check and see how I like them. Then I darkened the inner contour of the eye and around the bottom a little as well. I'm then defining the edges even further with the Epic Ink Liner, starting that into the nose wrinkles as well, and then just lining through the areas that are too thin to really define much. Once we're done with that, we're moving on to the sweater for now, starting with the red of the collar, then lining around where we want the shoulder seams to be with the dark brown eyeshadow. I started the stripes off with this thinner brush, but then realized I actually wanted them thicker, so for all the stripes, I'm applying the paints using a flat foundation brush or another flat brush similar in size. I'm going off of a reference photo just using similar colors that I already had, and I was following the color pattern as well but lost track several times and painted in the wrong color. We'll be adding in the white after we do all the colored stripes, and I'm not worrying about making all these edges and widths perfectly even. The stripes on the body of the sweater are going across the chest, like they're going around our body, and then same for the arms, each stripe going around. I'm using a smaller flat brush to fill in the top shoulder stripe, and you'll want to be careful if you're working both arms at the same time so you don't transfer wet paint from arm to chest as you reach across. Once the colored stripes are dry, I'm using the white color ink for all these little knit stitches. I was getting kind of frustrated because I couldn't seem to find the right size brush I wanted for these, but what you're going to do is create several small V's by turning your brush to a slight angle, dotting it on, then turning it to the opposite angle, and again dotting on to create one V or knit stitch. We're going to do this all the way across each stripe, and we're creating these white knit rows between each of the colors right along the edges rather than through the center of each different color. The only places we're not doing these are the shoulder and collar seams. Then for the seams, we're first blending along those edges with the dark brown shadow on a small blending brush to create a shadow going onto both pieces of the fabric. I switched to a bigger face brush to blend this around the outsides of the arms and onto the body as well as create grungy, smudgy areas randomly over the sweater. 
I'm going around the top of the collar using my lighter contour shade on a bigger crease blending brush to add a bit of a shadow and then deepening that shadow using a dark brown on the smaller crease brush so the sweater doesn't appear to just be sitting flat on the skin. Then I'm defining the same lines using the Epic Ink liner, creating thicker lines in some areas and adding more shading to those areas. I'm adding several light vertical lines along the inside of the collar to create the look of ribbing and then blending over with a bit of the brown eyeshadow to soften. Then once everything is dry, I'm using a bit of a setting spray to help keep that in place while we finish up the face. This is my little overall top. It didn't come up quite high enough, so I cut off the shorts and shortened the straps. Painted the Good Guys logo on using a red multi-surface acrylic paint. I used the extra pieces of strap that I'd cut off and pinned the bottom parts together with them so I could just wear it like a shirt. And lightly painted over most of the rest with a blue paint. I also made a huge tear down the front and safety pinned those pieces together near the top. I then put my contacts in and decided to add some white highlighting along the ribbing on the collar using the color ink and a small liner brush tapping out to tone down the color. Then for the shine, I'm using the clear NYX lid lacquer and I'm stippling that on with my finger anywhere I want to be shiny. I started with the areas I'd usually highlight and then the lips but ended up putting it pretty much all over around the stitches but not on them. And you'll want to be careful as you apply this because it does pull up a little product from those areas. I applied this to the lids as well and found that applying it with a brush was easier for me. I then went in and changed and defined some of the wrinkles around the mouth and nose with the darker contour shade and detail brush. Probably should have done this before the gloss, but it turned out alright. I used the darker brown eyeshadow to line around the nostrils and add more shading around them as well. I finished painting my stripes and decided to complete one full sleeve and create a stitched up area across the hand using the same methods as on the face and body. Then I went in with the pencil brush and blended out those super defined wrinkles a bit. I'm then adding in some blood paste using a small silicone dotting tool and I'm stippling a little of that onto all the red areas that are wide enough to fit the tool. This is like a gel blood that stays sticky and it just gives a little extra texture as well as shine to those areas. I'm using the Delium Tools splatter brush and some of the aged blood and blood tone alcohol activated paints that I've thinned out quite a bit with the 99% alcohol. Then facing the brush toward my face and flicking out with my thumb to create the look of blood spattering over the face, down onto the neck, and onto the overalls sleeve and hand as well. For the wig, I used Arta Wigs Style Marty in the color Pumpkin as a base and sewed in some lighter wefts to add some dimension and length to the sides. I ventilated in a few strands of the lighter color around the Widow's Peak and hairline, and all the lighter pieces you see in there are Arta's short wefts in the color Light Copper Red. I cut them to the length I wanted and styled the wig with my steamer. I smudged this bit of blood paste on my neck, but just decided to roll with it and used my finger to stipple out a few other areas on the face. Then once we put the wig on, this guy is complete. I'm really happy with how this one came out, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so, so, so much for all the love this month. You guys are seriously the best, and I'm just really glad you enjoyed the looks this year. So stay tuned for more Halloween looks, because that's pretty much all we do here. <laughs> Please check out all the information and links down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.